Well, you can write this day down, November 27, 2022. It's a red day, baby. It's a big red day. Look at that. Look at that graphic. Money on fire. If you got a 401k or long-term holdings, don't look at it. Because it is on fire. Today is the day that the S&P 500 has reached a 52-week low. And we've been pushing up, down, up, down. And I said this at the beginning of the summer, and I haven't been doing stock updates. I am part of a Discord. I do live calls. I am going to be doing a Patreon channel to subscribe to and get live play-by-plays and market analysis and all that stuff. That will be live next week. I'll put a link on here. I'll make a video about it. But all that aside, beginning of the summer, going into it, I just kept saying in any of the videos you watch, like, oh, we're going to pump, we're going to pump. There's no reason for this. If we can't solve the problems in the economy that are blatantly in front of our face everywhere we go there's no reason for the market to go up and just two weeks ago the market was at like look spy was at like 410 spx was at like 4200 something crazy high compared to where it should be is where it is today today it hit a low and i'm gonna switch over right right here spx peak down 36.23 that is a new 52-week low. That means within the last 52 weeks from the day of today, that is the low. It broke the low of the year by about 50 or 60 bucks. Now, what caused all of this? Well, a lot of things. Rate, interest rate hikes. They're not coming down. They're not stopping them. They're not tapering them. Today's uh, big catalyst that tanked even more was housing, right? So if the housing market starts coming down, interest rates go up, we're buying... Less house for more money. That's what we're going to have happen. Now, we still have high gas prices. We still have high inflation. We're going to have to somehow pay up all this student loan forgiveness. It's like $40 bazillion that they're talking about. You still have a war going on in Ukraine. You still have supply chain problems. We have all this stuff. And what was even more brilliant about it was last week, we had Fed meetings. We had two Fed meetings. And on Friday, they marched out some business owners in front of the Fed committee. And they basically just gave them these big, sad, soft stories about how their life sucks after COVID. And here we are. And here we are. Now, look, we're going to see stuff happen like this right now. This is in real time. It is 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. Look at this rally. Oh, my God, it's found a bottom. It hasn't found a bottom. Look, we can only sell off so far before we do get some kind of bounce, right? going to have to buy. There are buy orders that have been placed in the market a long time ago. There's people that I would watch in comment section on videos, on Weeble, other places, discourse. I'm a buyer at 370 on SPY. Okay. Well, you know what? Sometimes those orders actually do execute at 370. Now, SPY may have been 440. And you're thinking, God, it's so far away. It's never going to get filled. And here we are. Now, what does this mean for the market going forward? I've had a few... People I've talked to, even today, were like, well, good time to buy. Oh, honestly, probably not a good time to buy. <laughs> is it the bottom? Don't know. <laughs> All I know is it's the start of the bottom, right? We've reached a new low. Now let's look <laughs> at the weekly chart. I want to play technicals. I do emphasize this. Technicals have outliers within them, right? We have Fed talks. We have... CPI data. We have all these things that come out that skew the market one way or another. When we look back at pre, well, look at most of 2021, man, look, week after week, this is a weekly chart, it pretty much went straight up. You really couldn't lose money in that market if you played long term to the upside. Now we've had a pivot point and we are on a downtrend. And look at this channel. I drew this channel a while ago. Still holding true, right? And now what we might see here is because we did have an outlier is we could see it form this little megaphone and get some relief. But for the most part, this sucker's downtrending. If you want to look at the longer time frame, we don't have any support here for a minute. We're talking 3,500 on the S&P, right? Now this is weekly, so we've got some time to get there. Don't get too crazy. On the daily chart, we still have, you know, macro support levels on the daily. And obviously, if we go over to what's actually happening in real time, it's pretty ugly. So what should you do? I'm not telling you here, I'm going to be here and tell you what you should or shouldn't do. What I'm telling you is just what we see happening. And it's ugly. It's exactly what should be happening, right? 
market should be coming down, inflation is high, and our current administration is doing pretty much nothing about it. Let's be honest, they're not doing anything about it. They're gonna focus solely on midterms, they're gonna focus solely on elections, and um, the track record is in black and white, or we should say black and red. That's where we're headed, it's unfortunate. And in this time, if you are a long-term holder, you just sell it and pull cash out. That's what everyone's doing. That's why the market's crashing. People are taking cash out of the market, out of their investments, and they're sitting on cash because they don't trust what's happening. Here we are. So today, kind of a historic day. It's a good day for me. It was a good day for a lot of people that I trade with. Um, and we make money going both ways. And if you'd like to learn more about that, like I said, I will have a Patreon there. You can follow the channel. I will be re-engaging the, uh, the stock trading side of things and side of this content here moving forward. Um, till then, best of luck to you guys.